There is a Redeemer, sung by myself and Paul and played by Mark Hadley. Good evening and welcome to Thursday evening prayers for the 3rd of March. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. The hands of the Lord work faithfulness and justice. All the commandments of the Lord are sure. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. As usual, our Thursday evening psalm is selected verses from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. I've chosen three readings this evening from our lectionary and the first is a prayer of Habakkuk. Lord, I have heard your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds. Repeat them in our day, in our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Timan, the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covers the heavens and his praise filled the earth. His splendor was like the sunrise, rays flashed from his head where his power was hidden. Plague went before him. Pestilence followed his steps. He stood and shook the earth. He looked and made the nations tremble. The ancient mountains crumbled and the age-old hills collapsed, but he marches on forever. I saw the tents of Cushion in distress, the dwellings of Midian in anguish. Were you angry with the rivers, Lord? Was your wrath against the streams? Did you rage against the sea when you rode your horses and your chariots to victory? You uncovered your bow. You called for many arrows. You split the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and writhed. Torrents of water swept by. The deep roared and lifted its waves on high. I heard and my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound, decay crept into my bones and my legs trembled. Yet I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Saviour. Thanks be to God for his word. A New Testament reading now taken from Philippians chapter 3 verses 12 to 21. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus had made me his own. 
Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us then who are mature be of the same mind. And if you think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to what we have attained. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have given us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them. And now I tell you, even with tears, their end is destruction. Their God is the belly and their glory is their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. And it is from there that we are expecting a saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make things subject to himself. Amen. And our gospel reading this evening is from John 17 verses 1 to 8. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom you have sent, I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Whenever I read the readings for my Thursday prayer time with you all, there always seems to be something that jumps out at me. And today it was the Philippians reading and specifically verse 14. I press on towards the goal. Press on. If I told the children at the Ark, my nursery, to press on, they would probably press the light switch on or a button to press to start the CD player. Press on. What does it actually mean? Keep going. Keep pressing on, even when the road is tough. I was thinking only yesterday about this time last year. We were all in the middle of a tough lockdown. It was so hard and many felt so very weary. But we pressed on as hard as it was and here we are. For some however the goal was just not achievable. For others the goal had incredibly difficult consequences that are still troubling them a year on. Mental ill health being just one of those things. And right now our thoughts are consumed with the devastating events that are happening just three and a half hours away by plane in the Ukraine. We are unable to react in any practical way except maybe by giving money or aid or to pray. 
Yet I wonder, are my prayers enough? But I press on. It feels as though my prayers are insignificant, yet Jesus commands us, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door will be opened. And so we must press on towards the goal. We pray for peace, for justice and for the world to be as one in the name of Jesus. Even though there are many times when we want to throw in the towel, when we want to just give up, let's remember those words, press on, and let's put the past behind us. Today, we may feel we haven't done enough, but tomorrow is a new day and we press on, striving towards the heavenly call of God. Prayer is our greatest weapon, my friends, and each night we join together to pray. What greater way to press on than to press on together. Amen. Through listening to his music, I've made a friend in a guy called Matt Beckingham, and he has given me permission to share his songs. They are great hymns and great worship songs recorded by himself with his band. And tonight, for that reading, I chose May the Mind of Christ My Saviour, really thinking about verse five. May I run the race before me, strong and brave to face the foe, looking only unto Jesus as I onward go. Press on. Let us pray. Living God, in you there is no darkness. Shed upon us through this night the light of your forgiveness, your healing and your peace, that when we wake from sleep, we may know once more the brightness of your presence through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, which is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you 
and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. In the beginning you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. To dispel the darkness of our night, you sent forth your Son, the firstborn of all creation. He is our Christ, the light of the world, and we acclaim as all creation sings to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Living God, in you there is no darkness. Shed upon us through this night the light of your forgiveness, your healing and your peace, that when we wake from sleep, we know, may know once more the brightness of your presence through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, which is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as we come to our intercessionary prayers, we pray first the cycle of prayer for our Synod. And we think especially this evening for the ministers, elders and members of our churches in Northamptonshire. May they all be blessed in all of the work that they do. We pray for all of those facing the challenge of COVID-19, all key workers, NHS and care home staff, teachers and school staff, and those administering vaccinations. We pray also alongside those who have suffered physically and those whose mental health has been badly affected by the private privations and changes that they've faced in the last two years. We pray for all those who have heavy burdens to carry on their own, unbeknown to others. For those currently facing rising costs in food, housing, heat, and so many other essentials, the worry and concern that this is causing to so many families, God, may you be with them all and carry them through. Take away those burdens. And Lord, we pray tonight for those caught up in conflict, whether forced to flee or fight, or suffering the loss of loved ones, and especially those affected by the devastation in the Ukraine. Father God, we continue to pray with Celia for Alfie as he recovers from surgery. With Liz for Ryan and for her daughter Emma. With Prince for Cheryl, with Andy for Mike, his dad, and for Liz and Ruth in their ongoing care of him. We continue to pray with Judith for Catherine, her niece, and for the Reverend Ruth Dillon. We continue to pray for the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery, and for all those who grieve the passing of loved ones. We pray also for those grieving for John Allen, for Joan Allen and the Reverend Michael Bond, especially for members of his family and his friends at Long Buckby United Reformed Church. And in this time of silence, let's pray together for all of those people who are on our hearts this evening. And 
as we bring all of those prayers before you, Lord, we pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Before our final song this evening, I wanted to share um, a prayer that was written by a former moderator of the East Midlands Synod, Reverend John Slow. His book, Beginning Prayers, which he compiled, he actually wrote the prayer at number 79. It just felt right to share this evening. Compassionate God, we thank you for teaching us to care for our sisters and brothers who live and die along the margins of our world, imprisoned in poverty, powerlessness and prejudice. But we stand now in your presence, hesitant, shifting our weight from one foot to the other, knowing that we need to ask one more thing and counting the cost of asking, yet we can do no other. So give us, compassionate and passionate God, the holy rage which the prophets had and Jesus had, which will take us beyond mercy to strive for justice in your broken and divided world. Amen. I wanted to share to finish this evening a beautiful song sung by Lou Fellingham. I was concerned because I hadn't got permission, so I messaged her earlier, hoping that she might message me back. And she did. Thanks for asking, and I pray my song will be a blessing as you share. This is a beautiful song sung by Lou Fellingham for everyone in the Ukraine, for all those praying, for anyone who is hurting this evening. Let's press on together. God of Mercy, the prayer song by Lou Fellingham.
God of mercy, hear our prayer. Be their light to guide them home. The Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. Amen and good night. <laughs>